it's Easter. So here's what you can expect today. At some point today, somebody's going to stand up in your church house and say something like, uh, Jesus is not dead. He was dead, but he's not dead anymore. I mean, you can expect it. Just like you expect to hear the national anthem before somebody throws out the first pitch or, uh, or happy birthday before somebody makes a wish and blows out those candles. Not dead. Somebody's going to say it. But here's, a, here's the question. This, uh, this not dead Jesus stuff, is it really true? Or is it just something nice to say? I mean, it seems like a pretty important question. Because really, nobody's just sitting there today. The way I see it, everybody's rolling the dice. See, this not dead Jesus stuff, if it's not true, well then, yeah, really, you're probably wasting your time. You'd probably do better to just sing a rousing rendition of Happy Birthday and call it a day. <laughs> or better yet, you could have slept in and skipped all of this. Because <laughs> really, Jesus not dead? If it's really not true, eh, all of this stuff you're doing, sitting in rows, singing a bunch of songs, listening to some preacher talk. Uh, it really has just about as much significance as uh, as making a wish and blowing out those candles. On the other hand, if it is true, uh, well, just imagine the possibilities. Jesus, not dead. I mean, he was dead. In the ground, dead and buried, the funerals over, the casseroles have all been eaten. But now, all of a sudden, he's up and walking around again, better than ever. Not dead? <laughs> well, what do you do with a guy like that? My way of thinking, a guy like that, you pay attention to him. And when he says, I'm God, you say, I'll buy that. And when he says, I'm gonna lead you in a parade to glory. You say, let me get my drum and fall in behind you. If it's true, Jesus not dead, here's an idea for you, just today. Beat your drum, sing to the rafters, celebrate like you got nothing to lose and everything to gain. <laughs> just a thought. Yeah, happy Easter. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm not sure. I might resent being called some preacher, but that's all right. Wow. Good day. Even with a little snow, it's all right. I mean, uh, isn't it beautiful, Easter, snow? Well, it's a little strange, I guess. It's cold. I thought it was nice I got to wear a sweater one more Sunday. So, yeah, that's great. Well, we're going to have, we've got kind of a busy little time for us right away here. And just want to start with a few announcements. And we're not going to have uh, prayer and worship tonight. We're going to be a family time for people to spend with their families. And uh, we will have Bible study and worship on Wednesday night at 630 everything we usually do on Wednesdays, and so I look forward to having you there for that. It's always a, a great time. I really kind of like Wednesdays probably. They're probably my most favorite. Um, I, I just like to be able to just interact and get back to, you know, get into some of the deepness, you know, of what the Lord wants to show us. I really like that. Well, we're going to start out. I know uh, a lot of times we start out in church with, with some music, and we're going to do that today. Um, as he said, I probably should say, Jesus is alive. I know some of you may not believe that. Sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around that, but we'll talk about that a little bit today. Oops. Won't do that, but that's okay. 
Yeah. We'll take a poll. No, we won't. That's all right. All right. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to Ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him. So loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how. lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my It's interesting that song uh, talks about Jesus' return. This morning I got a uh, news bulletin on my phone. It was a news headline. And it says, Many wonder, will Jesus ever come back? You ever wonder that? placed on his head he knew that he would soon be dead he said did you forget me father did you they nailed him to a wooden cross soon all the world would feel the loss of christ the king before his hallelujah to die and lifted his face up to the sky said I am coming home now 
Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave his soul to glory. sword to pierce the body of our Lord so truly this is Jesus Christ our Savior he looked with fear upon his sword then turned to face his Christ and Lord fell to his knees crying hallelujah his feet inside now in our hearts we know he died to save us from ourselves oh the slain with oil and spice anointing hallelujah but as they went to move the stone they saw that they were not alone but jesus christ is risen hallelujah say hallelujah hallelujah praises to your name father only you only you i was a wretch i remember who i was i was lost i was blind was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside there at the cross the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had hope, thank you Jesus for the blood applied, thank you Jesus it has washed me white, thank you Jesus you have saved my life and brought me from the 
darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting. No end, for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my stronger than all oh, the wonder work and power of the blood, the blood that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. There's none stronger than oh the wonder work and power of the blood the blood he calls us sons and daughters we are ransomed by our father through the blood the blood thank you Jesus It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life and brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Let's sing that chorus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus. Washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life and brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Glory to. God good? Woo. So we're going to do something a little bit special today. So how many kids do we have here? I've got a story I want to read to the kids. So all the kids can come up here. Okay, hurry. <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. You can come up, sit over here, sit over here, like over here. Okay, I'm not yeah, come on, come on, come sit. I know if you're old and you think you're a kid, you can come too. That's all right. Yep. Come on, find a spot. You can sit on the front seat or sit on the floor or whatever you want to do. Woo! Here, I'll move this back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. I know. You carry the babies, even though you want to be up here. I know. Cindy's just a little kid. Come on in. All right. So here we go. All right. Here we go. Let's see. Can you guys see from here? 
When we celebrate Easter, we remember that God gave us his son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. Jesus made sick people well. He even made the dead live again. Jesus chose 12 men to be his disciples. He told them that God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us. But some people didn't want to hear about God. They didn't want to listen to Jesus. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem. People shouted, Hosanna to our king! Later, Jesus and his disciples ate the Passover supper. Jesus washed their feet to show how much he loved them. After supper, they went to a garden to pray. But the men who didn't like Jesus sent soldiers to arrest him. Jesus was sent to die. His disciples were very sad. But Jesus had told them that he would rise after three days. On the third day, women went to Jesus' tomb. The tomb was open. Jesus was not there. That night, Jesus' disciples were in a locked room. Suddenly, Jesus was there. He was alive. Jesus said, go and tell everyone that if a person believes in me, they will be saved and they will live forever. This is the Easter story, that Jesus is alive today. And because he died for us, we will live too. Isn't that a great story? It's called The Easter Story by Patricia A. Pingry. Great story. You can go back to with whoever you came with. Good. That's good. You know, sometimes you have to get back into reading upside down, you know. All right. So I just want to mention, too, that we have gifts for all the kids um, afterwards so they can come up and get those after we're done. So the message today is really titled, Come On, Believe Already. You know, Jesus, all through the Gospels, you see, you know, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all wrote a story, a biography about Jesus' life. And at the end, when Jesus died, wrote, died on the cross, was buried in a tomb and rose again, all of them tell us about how difficult it was for these guys to believe that Jesus was alive. Over and over we see this. We're going to look at that a, a, a second. And it frustrated Jesus. And he, and he kept saying, come on, believe already. I mean, what does it take? You know, i got to say, you know, unless you've seen death up close, Unless you've seen death up close, it's hard to understand the finality, the certainness that dead is dead. Right? Because when you look at a dead body, dead is dead. You know, after seeing what Jesus did, it was amazing that he even lived as long as he did on the cross. And I'm sure these guys, having watched him go through the torture that he went through, were surprised that he even lived on the cross as long as he did, let alone come to life again. I mean, it just boggled their minds what they could possibly be thinking. Sometimes it's hard to believe. Sometimes it's hard to believe. You know, God tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. That means that God wants us to trust Him. That there are times 
that he requires us to believe when we don't have all the pieces put together yet. He wants us to believe when it doesn't seem like it's possible that the dead could live. There was a whole group of religious leaders called the Sadducees, and it just boggled their mind. They just could not believe that the dead could possibly live, and yet they were religious leaders. I want to read you part of the resurrection story out of Luke chapter 24. This is out of the Living Bible. And in verse 24 it says, But very early on Sunday morning they took the ointments to the tomb and found that the huge stone covering the entrance had been rolled aside. So they went in. But the Lord Jesus' body was gone. They stood there puzzled, trying to think what could have happened to it. Suddenly, two men appeared before them, clothed in shining robes, so bright their eyes were dazzled. The women were terrified and bowed low before them. Then the men asked, why are you looking in a tomb for someone who's alive? Go figure. He isn't here. He's come back to life again. Don't you remember what he told you back in Galilee? That the Messiah must be betrayed into the power of evil men and be crucified and that he would rise again the third day? Then they remembered and rushed back to Jerusalem to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. The woman, the women who went to the tomb were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and several others. But the story sounded like a fairy tale to the men. They didn't believe it. They couldn't wrap their head around it. It's not possible. It's not possible. In that same chapter, I want to read also, and it says, And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them and greeted them. But the whole group was terribly frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Have you ever seen someone that you haven't seen in a long time? They're not even dead. You haven't seen them for a long time, and you go... It was when you guys walked in this morning, the same thing happened to me. Because I haven't seen you in, in a long time. And it was like, oh, oh yeah, and can you imagine when you've seen him die. He said, why are you frightened, he asked. Why do you doubt that it's really I? Look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see that it's I myself. Touch me, make, me sure, make sure that I'm not a ghost. For ghosts don't have bodies, as you see that I do. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see the marks of the nails and showed them the wounds in his feet. Yet still they stood there undecided, filled with joy and doubt. With Jesus standing right there in front of them, they just couldn't get it. You know, here's the interesting thing. Jesus expected them to believe. Jesus expected them to believe. Don't worry about the babies, you know. We love babies, so don't worry about the babies. We all know what babies sound like, so it's okay. But Jesus expected them to believe. I think we should just listen to that for a minute or so. Listen to this, what, what happens here. Then Jesus said to them, you are such foolish, foolish people. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Jesus expected them to think about what God had said in the Bible and to believe it. He says, it's true. Why is it so hard for you? Then he goes on to say, wasn't it clearly predicted by the prophets that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his time of glory? 
Then Jesus quoted them passage after passage from the writings of the prophets, beginning with the book of Genesis and going right on through the scriptures, explaining what the passages meant and what they said about himself. So eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. You see, Thomas wasn't with them when Jesus first appeared to them. And he said, you know what, I can't believe this. Of course, they're looking at Jesus and they can't believe it. Thomas is saying, I'm not going to believe it unless I see him too. I'm not going to believe just because I've walked with you guys for the last three years. I've ate and slept with you and I trust you with my life. I'm still not going to believe you. But eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them and greeting them. Then he said to Thomas, Thomas, put your finger into my hands. Put your hand into my side. And he says this. He says, don't be faithless any longer. Believe. You can hear me saying, oh, come on, believe already. And Jesus told him this. He said, you believe because you have seen me. But blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. That's us. That's us. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. You know, Jesus was frustrated that they were so slow to believe. I wonder sometimes if Jesus is frustrated with us at how slow it takes us to believe. Jesus expects us to believe. You know, in the book of John, right near the end, he's been going all through this about the resurrection and about believing. And this is what he says. He says, Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles besides the ones I've told you about in this book. But then he says this. He says, but these are recorded so that you will believe that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life. That's what it's all about. Easter's about life. It's about life. It's not about the new life of baby chicks and bunnies. It's not. It's about the physical, resurrected life of Jesus of Nazareth and the life that we can have because of it. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. You know, sometimes in our lives, it seems, you know, the things around us, the tangible, the things that we can touch and feel and taste, are so real that it's hard for us to believe what is even more real, and that's that he's alive. But the life that Jesus gives is to give life to us, that we can live too. I want to share a quote out of a book that I've read that has really been has ministered to me. It's called the This Beautiful Truth. It's by a lady named Sarah Clarkson. She's a pastor's wife and um, I just want to share this with you she says this though this world is full of grief as it always is but the goodness of God is coming 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 his beauty is like a precious babe grown great in the womb reaching toward birth he takes our grieved hands in the fragile, miraculous grip of newborn fingers. God's beauty is the kind that glimmered in a body that healed and cooked, whose hands stilled storms and welcomed children. He is the beauty that rose from the very ashes of a violent death who draws us onward into his light. Beauty that reaches out to us, clothed in countless different hands and faces, woven with light, speckled with new leaves or bright stars. 
leading us forward into the healed world and the kingdom of heaven. Beauty, ever ancient, ever new, breaking into our darkness and making it light. Jesus is still saying, come on, believe already. Come on, follow me. Follow me, I have a plan for your life. Come on, believe already. this time of desperation when all we know is doubt and fear there is only one foundation we believe we believe This broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing, and in our weakness and temptations, we believe, we believe, we believe. Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. Let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now that loving the church live loud our God will say we believe, we believe and the gates of hell will not prevail for the power of God has torn the veil now we know your love will never fail we believe, we believe let the lost, let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now and love and faith church live loud our god will say we believe we believe and the gates of hell will not prevail for the power of god has torn the veil and we know your love will never fail we believe we believe we believe in god the father we believe in jesus christ we believe Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back. We 
Lord, we thank You. We thank You for Your faithfulness to us, for Your love for us. Lord Jesus, we thank You for saying yes to the plan of the Father, for dying on the cross for us, for rising again and giving us victory over sin in our lives. Lord, be praised. Forgive us, Lord for being so late to say we believe. Lord, we come today and we say yes. We say yes. I know some here today have said yes years and years ago. Others have never said yes to Jesus' call to follow. And that's all it is, is saying yes Lord, that we thank you for taking our sins on the cross. We thank you for bearing our sins with you. We thank you for the life that you give us, the same life that raised you from the dead. Lord, work in us. Change the way we live. In Jesus' name. Isn't God good? He's so patient with us. He's so patient.